Judges chapter 3, verse 13 through 15, and the word of the Lord says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt excuse me thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel the Lord God of your fathers the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob hath sent me unto you this is my name forever and this is my memorial unto all generations amen our thought for this morning he is he is let us pray Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 12 Ephesians 2 and 12 says that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world at that time you were without Christ We were strangers from him. We were estranged from God and from his promises. We, we especially us, we were a people that were called not my people. And the person who is not yet submitted to the rule of Christ is an alien, meaning an outsider to the kingdom of God and is separated from the benefits thereof. Which is amazing because everybody tries to claim the favor of God. Everybody tries to claim the benefits, but they don't belong to everybody. They belong to those who are his in covenant, in relationship, and in obedience. If we're not in that group, then we are strangers. Strangers, meaning without a relationship and as a result, without a covenant. Having no claim to God's promises found in his word. Having no real hope and being without God in the world. And that is a bad place to be. You don't want to be without God in the world because if you don't have a connection with the one and only true source then you are really on your own uh, now even if you're walking with the lord we go through some times when we feel like we are on our own but it's a bad thing to really and truly be out here on your own we need god the bible says in him we live and move, have our being. Amen. We need him because he is the source of our next breath. And even though nobody can get away from him, but everybody does not have him because they do not have relationship with him. Having landed this predicament because of the sin of Adam in the Garden of Eden man has ever since been seeking to reunite himself 
with the almighty creator and as we've talked about so many times this is why there are so many religions as man tries to figure his own way back into the garden we've tried to uh, build our own bridges over the river of death uh, but every man-made bridge fails uh, we, we try to get through the hedge by making our own door but no other door can get you back into this garden uh, you can't go over the wall and you can't tunnel under it you can only go through that one door that is called Jesus Christ and and so we've come up with all kind of other things and rituals and ceremonies and uh, burning of incense and ringing of bells and chanting and all, all kind of stuff trying to find spirituality because we don't want the one true spirituality that was given to us by the very creator who we walked away from in the beginning. Due to the ever increasing wickedness of mankind, God, being holy, distanced himself to the point that men didn't even know the Almighty's name. So we're just going from bad to worse. Not only do folk not have a relationship, but God to the place where his name is no longer recognized and uh, it gets to the point where even in our religious institutions you you cannot find the name and there's something about knowing his name you see the name indicates the personhood the name carries the authority that's why a police officer can say stop in the name of the law and it's not because they said the word law it's not the letters law that will cause you to stop uh, but it is the authority that is in it uh, uh, when we go to cast out a devil in the name of Jesus it's not the audible sound of the word Jesus that will make a demon be put to flight but it is the authority that is in the name which is why you have to have a relationship with Jesus to use the name of Jesus if you don't believe me there are seven sons of a man named Skeva you can ask them all about it you got to have a relationship to use the name but in order to enter to the relationship it seemed like we at first going to have to at least know the name somebody said amen verse number 13 of our text said and Moses said unto God behold when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them the God of your fathers has sent me unto you they shall say to me what is his name what shall I say unto them God has sent Moses on a mission to free the people but I want you to understand something and if you have the ancient uh, Middle Eastern mindset in mind when you're reading the Bible and really when you're living it will help you to understand what's going on a lot better you see when we say God we understand only one so if I say God to you you we both know we are talking about the same guy you see, but the children of Israel lived in Egypt and they worshiped thousands of beings that were called gods. So if Moses just shows up and says, God sent me, then the natural thing for the Israelites to ask would be, which God? Which one are you talking about? Because we grew up here in Egypt, so we know all about Osiris, we know about Isis, we know about Horus, we, we know Sekhmet and all of these other, we know all the Egyptian gods. So you saying God sent you, who is this God that has sent you unto us? And so Moses is thinking ahead and he says, when I show up, they're going to want to know your name. Uh, who is the one who claims to have more power than Pharaoh? 
Who is the one who says that he can bring us out by a mighty hand? Who is the one who can break the strength of the world's only superpower? Who, who is the one whose throne is exalted above the gods of Egypt? Who is this God who you say has sent us to us? Moses is saying, if I'm going to flow in your authority, I'm going to have to know your name. Coming forth with the actual name of the Almighty would authenticate Moses as both a prophet and as the official spokesman for the God of their fathers. After all, how could Moses be God's official representative if he doesn't even know his name? How can you represent the Lord if you don't even know his name? I mean, when you go out and witness to folk, you don't have to be able to quote the whole Bible. You, you don't have to be able to tell me what's in all 66 books verse by verse. But I think at the very least, if you want me to understand that I should follow your Lord, I, I think you ought to know your Lord's name. And I'll give you a hint, his name is not Lord. And his name is not God. God is not a name. God is a title. You've called him by his position. You've called him by his rank. Lord simply means sovereign master, master by way of ownership. That's why if you are renting out property, you are the owner of the land. You're called a land lord. Uh-huh. So when you call him Lord, when you call him God, he knows who you're talking to. But there are some situations where you're going to have to know his name. Moses said, I'm going to have to carry your name. They're going to want to know your name. If, if they're going to walk under my authority, I need to carry an authority above my own name. I need the name of the God of our fathers who has sent me. Also, in the ancient world, it was thought that to possess the name of a divine being gave you power with them. You could call on them whenever you need them because you could call on their actual name. Uh, you've heard that kind of a thought before. In the fairy tales you grew up with, you might not have recognized what it was you were hearing, but... In one of the tales that we are told, there was a young lady who needed some work done. And she could not do the work that needed to be done. And so this little guy showed up. I think the story might refer to him as an imp, but he really, he represents a demon spirit and he offers to do the work for her at a price. Now, and the price was the baby that she would have later on. Well, I need this work done so I don't die now. I ain't worried about the baby. So she makes a deal with the devil. Uh -huh. And later on, he shows up to exact his price. He wants the baby, but she cries. And I don't want to give up my baby. We're talking about a fairy tale. We'll get back to the Bible in just a moment. Amen. Uh, she cries. She don't want to give up her baby. And it says, well, I'll give you one chance to get your baby back. Uh, if you can guess my name, then the deal will be broken. Uh, and she went here and went there and talked to all kind of folk and tried to get all kind of names. Couldn't find the name. Uh, and on the last day, at the last hour, when he shows up, I'm going to take your baby away forever. But what he didn't know is she had inadvertently heard him singing his own name when he was drunk. See, that's how you know it was a demon. He was drunk. Uh -huh. And so at the last moment, she revealed his name. And his name was Rumpelstiltskin. And, but because she knew his name, she had power with him, you see. She could stop him from doing the thing. Now, now, now uh, of course, we know that's, that's just a fairy tale, but I want you to understand there's something about knowing God's name. It, it gives you power with him. When, when you know who he is, when you know who to call on, uh, not just knowing the name, though, we got to walk with him. Uh, we got to receive his name. We got to embrace his name. Uh, and we got to walk under his authority. But there's something about knowing 
the name that will help you out in the spiritual dimension. Uh, so Moses wants to know, uh, when they ask me, who is the God that has sent you? What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Verse 14, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. Now, in Hebrew, what he said is, Ayah Asher Ayah. That is, I am that I am. It also can be interpreted, I will be what I will be. It also can be interpreted as I exist of myself because I exist. Uh, and so God in naming himself is saying I am the one who is. And I am not because somebody made me but because I just exist of my own authority. Somebody asked me one time, well, if God made everything else, who made God? I said, God was not made because if somebody made him a God, he is not. Uh, but he always has been and he always will be. Uh, from eternity far past to eternity far future, uh, which is not even a real phrase because eternity has no time. But he exists outside of time. He is the one who created time. He is the one who created the concept of creation. Uh, that's why I know that we can trust in him. That's why I know we can rely on him because everything that is is created from his mind and by his word and exists by his own pleasure. Uh, and he has the ability to change anything at any moment according to his own decision. Uh, and that's why whatever I need, I can call on him because I know there's nothing too hard for God. He said, I am, I am the existing one. Another way of interpreting that, by the way, is I am present. Uh, and that becomes important when you begin to combine his name with the uh, Jehovahistic titles uh, because you begin to get a message out of the various names that he has revealed of himself over time. We, we may or may not get there today, but he said, I am the God who himself is whatever you need. Ah. Uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is almighty, all-knowing, and present in every place at the same time. Somebody say glory. Uh, there is no greater help you could ever call on. Uh, there are no better hands that could ever hold your life. Uh, there is no one more qualified to guide your steps or more deserving of your complete obedience. Only the great I am. I love it. See that I am, it means I don't need anything. I don't, I don't need anybody. Uh, we don't we don't worship him because he needs our worship. Your worship doesn't strengthen him. Your, your praise doesn't feed him. Your, your obedience doesn't give him life. Everything we do for him is really for ourselves because you can't add anything to him. Uh, you didn't make him and you can't sustain him and you can't rescue him. Uh, but we are the ones who are in need of his almighty power. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, there is no need to anchor your trust in anyone else. Uh, whatever it is that you need, God said, I am. Uh, think about it for just a moment. Uh, your own mama and daddy can fail you. Uh, your husband or your wife can fail you. Uh, your friends can fail you. Uh, but Jesus never fails. Uh, Jesus never has to call on somebody else to get the help that you need. Uh, once you call on his name, you've called on the name of the one who sits on the throne and he has all the help that there ever will be. He is the great I am. Verse number 15. 
God said, moreover, that means God continued. God gave an answer, but then God expounded on his own answer. God said, moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord, God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial unto all generations. Uh, now, here the great I am gives a secondary name for itself. You wouldn't know it if you're reading it in the English because it doesn't come across as clearly and that's why I'm up here talking to break it down for you. You see, God gave a secondary name for itself and he tells us that this secondary name is his name forever. It's the name that we're supposed to call on and have been calling on. Uh huh. Ah, he said, this is my name forever. Uh, as I am is the first person Hebrew word, ayah. Remember I said, he, he said unto Moses, ayah, Asher, ayah. So I am in Hebrew is ayah. Uh, okay. And we still see that name even in biblical names today. Ayah is still being spoken. They honored the Lord by putting his name into their children's names. Uh, for example, there's a great prophet by the name of Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And that means exalted by I am. There's a man by the name of Zedekiah. Zedekiah means righteous. I am. Uh huh. There is a man whose name in Hebrew they might pronounce it as Eliyah or Eliyah. Uh, we see it in our English Bibles because we now have a J, so we pronounce it as Elijah, but it would be Eliyah. Uh -huh. And it means God, I am. Uh, so we still see the I am showing up in names and in places throughout the scripture but God we are not you see you are not I am and I am not the I am uh huh so we are instructed to call him by his name in the third person which is Jehovah or as it is more properly pronounced or more popularly pronounced Jehovah. Y'all more familiar with that name. Jehovah. And it literally means he is. Ah. So what God said to them is I am that I am. You shall tell them that I am as sent you. But then God spoke more and he said he is the God of your father. Uh, that is my name forever. He said, Yehovah, the God of your fathers. That is my name forever. Uh, so then we see in verse 15 that Moses instructed to tell the people of Israel that he is, is the God of their fathers. What is his name? Uh, and he would say, Jehovah. Uh, but to them, they, he would have been saying, he is. Uh, his name is he is the one who he is the 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 one who exists the, the the one who is the creator of all things the almighty the one and only the first and only source he is look i'm not i'm not talking about the god of the trees or or the god of the rivers or the god of the clouds i'm, I'm not talking about just the god of the harvest or or the god of fertility i'm talking about the god of god um, I'm talking about the God of heaven and earth. Um, I'm talking about the God of everything. Uh, I'm talking about the God of creation. Uh, I'm talking about the God of existence. Uh, I'm talking about the one who sits on the throne. Uh, I'm talking about the Lord of hosts. Uh, I'm talking about the master of the assembly of the heavens. Uh, I'm talking about the one to the, the, all the ones you call God, they all bow down to him. Uh, I'm talking about the one that the angels worship. Uh, I'm talking about the one that the seraphim bow down to. Uh, I'm talking about 
the one who's carried on the shoulder of the cherubim. Uh, I'm talking about the one who exists from eternity to eternity. Uh, I'm talking about the almighty God. Uh, somebody say he is. Put your hands together and bless his holy name. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the word God literally means might or mighty one. Uh, or the strong one. Uh, it means he is strength. That's what God means. Uh, when you say the Lord is God, uh, you're saying Jehovah is a mighty one. Uh, you're saying he is the strong one. Uh, somebody say amen. Uh, so Jehovah said to tell Israel uh, that he is the strength of your father. Uh, he said, the Lord, God of your fathers. Uh, he said, he is the strength of your fathers. Uh, I've come to make you free. Uh, well, what is the name of the God who has sent you? Uh, well, let me tell you. Uh, he is the strength of your fathers. Uh, he is the rock of Abraham. Uh, he is the mighty one of Jacob. Um, he is the one who has brought us thus far. Uh, and he is the one who will take us home. Uh, he is our strength. Uh, somebody say yes, Lord. Uh, he is the strength of Abraham. Uh, he is the strength of Isaac. Uh, he is the strength of Jacob. Uh, he is the one who made them great. Uh, he is the one who brought them out of Ur, uh, of the Chaldees. Uh, he is the one who gave them the land of Israel uh, as an inheritance. Uh, he is the one who sustained them uh, during their sojourn in Egypt. Uh, might not like it where you're at right now, huh? but he is the one huh, who has maintained you huh, in the place where you're at. Huh? Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Well, uh, he is the one. Uh, he is the one uh, who is about to deliver them uh, from their slavery. Uh, he is the one uh, who 1,500 years later uh, came as a baby, uh, born of a virgin uh, in a little town called Bethlehem. Uh, ah, they called his name uh, Jehovah's Salvation. Uh, but we pronounce his name in English um, as Jesus. Uh, somebody say Jesus. I know his name. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, he is Jehovah. Uh, he is the mighty one. Uh, he is the savior of the world. Uh, he is the one on whose name uh, you ought to call. Uh, he is the one who was wounded for our transgression. He is the one who was bruised for our iniquity. He is the one who had the chastisement of our peace upon him. He is the one by whose stripes we are healed. He is, somebody say, Jesus. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the one uh, who was crucified and died uh, to pay for our sins. Uh, he is the one who defeated death uh, and came out of the grave by his own strength. Uh, he is the one uh, who is the resurrection and the life. Uh, he is everything you need. Uh, whatever you need, uh, call on Jesus. He is uh, the one. Uh, he is your strength. Uh, he is your sovereignty. Uh, he is your master. Uh, he is your deliverer. Uh, he is the one who makes you free. Uh, he is your healer. Uh, he is your heart fixer. Uh, he is your mind regulator. Uh, he is the mender of your marriage. Uh, he is the fixer of your finances. Uh, he is... Uh, Somebody say, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why would you call on any other God huh, when he is everything you need? Huh? Do you need peace? 
peace. Huh? He is the Prince of Peace. Huh? Do you need righteousness? Huh? He is the King of Righteousness. Huh? Do you need restoration? Huh? He is the Restorer of the Breach. Huh? The Great I Am huh, has taken on a body of flesh huh, and come amongst his creation huh, to save us. Huh? His name is Jesus. Huh? And he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, he is the light, he is the healer, he is the provider, he is the savior, he is the source of your strength, he is the strength of your life, he is the forgiver of sins, he is the healer of souls, he is the loving father who welcomes you home, he is whatever you need, you better learn to call on Jesus, if you need some help, you better call on Jesus. Jesus, huh? yes, huh? if you need some strength, huh? you better call on Jesus, huh? yeah, huh? yeah, huh? yeah, huh? he is, huh? whatever it is, uh, fill in the blank, huh? what you've been praying for, huh? what you've been crying over, huh? you're not without what you need, huh? he is, huh? What do you need right now? Do you need peace of mind? He is. Do you need a prayer answered? He is. He is the one who brought you out. He saved you yesterday. He's your strength today. He is. He is. He is. Yes. 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 He is. He is. Ah, uh, you are not without help. Because if you need help, he is. You are not without hope. If you need hope, he is. You are not without strength. If you need strength, he is. You are not without mercy. Because if you need the mercy of God, he is. He loved you so much. He got off of his own throne and came down into this pigsty we call earth. He sullied himself with our sin. He took our filth upon him so that you could take his righteousness upon you. Now, thinking of this God, if he loved us so much to give us his only begotten son, how will he not along with him give us everything that we need? It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Listen to me. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. I'm not talking to your neighbor. I'm talking to you. God wants, he desires to bless you. All we got to do is get ourselves in position with the great I am. All we got to do is live a lifestyle that proclaims his name. All you got to do is live right by his help and he'll help you to live right. Well, I don't know how to live holy. I don't know how to be sanctified. Well, he is. He is my holiness. He is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. He is the one who cleans me from the inside. Uh, he is the one who pulled me out of the miry clay uh, and set me on a rock to stand. He is the one who put a clapping in my hands. He is the one who put joy in my spirit. He is the one who put dancing in my feet. Hey, he is. Call on his name. Jesus is the one. He'll save you today. 
He'll heal you today. He'll restore you today if you'll bless his name.